My name is Viking Gesho. I studied robotics in the University of Hannover and now I am involved in the ISO drone project with all the drone related research. So I met Matthias over a common friend and then we both met a few times during climbing and he was talking about that he will start this ISO drone project and was looking for an engineer. The most interesting part about this team is that we are all from different fields. So Matthias and Katrin are more from the hydrological side and I'm more from the engineering robotic side. Uh, Mikein is just indispensable for me. He's, he has so many skills in programming, uh, technical things, electronic devices, programming data loggers. And he's also a, a great person to work with. He's always there for the team helping everyone and putting himself back. So Malkin is absolutely essentially for me. So we recently had this test in Rute, which is an agricultural research station near Hanover. And Malkin was flying the drone and obtaining thermal infrared data. And the goal of this was to observe if there are differences in the plant temperature of different genotypes of weed. Today we are here in Saarstedt, close to Hannover, at the research site from the University of Hannover. And we have one field of wheat here. And today we want to make a thermal imaging of the field as well as multispectral. And right now I'm setting up the drone to fly in, let's say, 10 minutes. So we have a thermal camera, the multispectral camera. We also have a reference panel here that we take um, before and after each flight immediately to convert the raw sensor reading into percentage of light reflected. Then we have to plan the flight because it's the first time I'm here. And then we are ready to go. We did a flight plan where the drone flies over the crop field in, a, in rows where each, the goal is that each image overlap to some degree and we take an image every few meters. And the final goal we want is that we have an overview over the whole area. So we stitch all the single images together to one big map. So after we did the flight in the field, the next step would be to process the data. So I have all the thermal images, I load them into the processing software. Now the first step would be to calculate where the images overlap and from which position each image was captured. So we do an alignment procedure. So after processing each of these uh, blue points represent pixels that are found in multiple images. So if I zoom in and I select one, I can see where this pixel is found in all the images. So I can filter by photos. So I can highlight the matches between two photos. Here each blue line represents the same pixel taken in two overlapping images. And then the next step we would create a denser point cloud. So here we have 7 million points in three dimensions. And we can generate a height model from this. So this was, would represent the differences in height. So here you can see the tracks of the tractor. And we can analyze the whole field. So one aspect that you might be interested in is the crop height, so how far did the crop grow over the season. So you would do multiple overflights and then you see changes in height and see how the crop grows. In the final step, we would use the height map to project all the thermal images on top of it. So we get a, a thermal map of the whole crop field. It would look like this. So we see uh, the soil is red, which means hot compared to a blue colored cooler temperature of the crop field.
So we see a difference in temperature between the crops and the crops are able to release or they release water from the leaves, which cools them down. So we have a way to see how much water is available in the soil, how much water can they access. And for our research, this is interesting because we would be able to identify trees that under drought conditions still have access to water. The ideal outcome of our project is we go to a new place that we don't know. We do our overflights a couple of times. We, we create a time series, let's say over a month or, or over a year. We analyze the data and we create a map of the forest that tells us we have X trees of species Y, X trees of species Z and so on. And this tree is having deep roots. This tree is using deep roots. This tree is probably using deep roots.